Welcome to the Great Compromise Podcast. How are you doing today, Victoria? I'm good, thanks. Ready to debate. Excellent, me too. But before we start, let's talk about the show's format. This will be a somewhat structured debate between Victoria and myself. The pro side will start and will explain their point of view, and then the con side will follow with theirs. After both sides have gone, we'll head into an open debate, and that's where the fun starts. Our topic today is the Electoral College. So what is the Electoral College? Well, according to the National Archives, it's the process we use in America to elect our presidents. When we vote for a presidential candidate, we're actually voting for an elector, and they in turn will vote for the president. The Electoral College consists of 538 electors, with a majority of 270 electoral votes needed to elect the president. Your state has the same number of electors as it does members in its congressional delegation, one for each member in the House of Representatives, plus two senators. Not to forget DC, of course, they're allocated three electors themselves. So why are we talking about the Electoral College? Well, it's because this topic is brought up every four years, generally after the presidential election. One side says that it's a good system and we should keep it, and the other side says it's outdated and serves no purpose. This is what we're going to debate today, so let's get into it. So I am actually on the pro side of the Electoral College, and I am a fan, even. Um, My first point is that the Electoral College ensures that people from every state stay relevant. If the election was only based on the popular vote, candidates would only need to campaign in highly populated states and cities. Why would they ever need to come to a small state like New Hampshire when they can spend more time in New York, Texas, and California? Smaller states would be completely ignored in favor of pandering to large cities instead. In a way, this gives the people more of a voice than the popular vote ever could. Which leads me to my next point. The Electoral College allows minorities a larger influence in the elections. Minorities are simply that, a minority in this country. In a popular vote system, white people would literally have more voting power than them. That is not the case in our current system. Why do you think people and pundits always talk about the, quote, black vote or Hispanic vote? Obviously, these groups don't always vote the same way, but often as a voting bloc, they can swing an election. Like how Hispanic voters helped Trump win Florida in 2020. And lastly, It was the system the Founding Fathers laid out for us. It's the Twelfth Amendment of the Constitution. It's worked well for us for hundreds of years now. It's what the people are most familiar with. So why change it? Nicely put. But I disagree. I'm taking the con side, and this is why. When we vote for presidents, those votes don't actually go towards the presidency, but to an elector. Why even have a buffer? If the population comes out to vote for our president, then let them have control of the impact that that creates. It's an extra step that was created out of concern of equal number of people in each party, fearing that the South would be at a disadvantage. Faceless electors are electors who don't vote for the candidate in that state. They abandon expectation. Only 32 states require you to vote the way the state leans. In 18 states, there's nothing keeping electors from being faithless and disregarding popular opinion in their state. Also, the framers would be against the way that the Electoral College works today. A number of the framers expressed regret about the way the Electoral College and the Constitution organized it and expressed desire to change it shortly after it was made, calling it a product of haste and fatigue. And that was hundreds of years ago. Lastly, the United States is the only country to do this. The Electoral College system means candidates can win the popular vote but lose the Electoral College, and that's happened five times now. Interesting arguments, Victoria, and I hope you're ready to back those up. Oh, I'm ready. Good, because I have thoughts. First of all, doesn't feel democratic is what you said along those lines, but... That was my very first point, is that the Electoral College ensures that people from everywhere, even small states, are relevant. With a popular vote, 
the politicians wouldn't have to campaign in the beautiful state of New Hampshire or a smaller state. Who would care about Ohio? Nobody cares about Ohio. And they're important in the Electoral College. So, I mean, politicians would only campaign in New York City or California or Texas or, or Florida, right? Mm-hmm. So the system we have now ensures that more people have a voice and than they would otherwise. Your thoughts? So are you saying that the only way we can be sure that people campaigning would go to all 50 states is if we have electors? I just don't accept that. That's completely true, though. There could be so many other systems in place where we're not handing off power to electors, where people voting are immediately in control of who gets elected, and campaigners go to all 50 states. I'm sure we're capable of putting another system in place. So you have a third system in mind? Is that what you're implying here? I think there's a lot of room for improvement in this system, which would also what? include, like, mandating that elector, like, politicians campaign in all of the states that they would be president of. Like, that should definitely be required. But I don't think electors are the only, like, vehicle making that possible for us. Unfortunately, I think it is. Why? You can't require politicians go to every state. Even in the current system, we can't require anyone to do anything. It's in their best interest to do that because every electoral vote counts. Mm -hmm. But in a popular vote system, they would it would save so much time and money for them to only visit populated areas. And that's just the truth. I think that there are plenty of reasons why somebody would want to campaign throughout the country to get an understanding of who they would be making choices for and like who their population is. Like if you only campaigned in New York City and California, there's a majority of the country that you're missing. So I don't think it's like out there to say that people have to campaign across the country. They're already doing that. We have to hand off power to electors to make sure that this continues to happen? Yes, they're already no! they're already doing that because of the Electoral College. What you're saying implies that politicians care what the majority of people think. That is not true. Politicians care about being elected. That is the truth. And that can't be refuted. I know that. <laughs> so to make it easier to campaign, they would not visit most places in the country and a lot of people's voices would go unheard but in a system where an elector can be faithless mm. how do we know that everybody's voices are being heard you know i'm glad you brought that up because i was going to bring up the faithless elector argument it's it's everyone always brings it up all oh, the electors can vote for whoever they want they don't have to vote for the, whoever won in their state. Well, how many times have there ever been faithless electors? Um, once, one time in American history, there's been a faithless elector. So I can't, I can't really consider this a serious argument when it's not a problem. One time in all of history. And One when was this? When time. was this event? Well, I don't have that in front of oh, me. Oh, convenience. <laughs> I just, hey, I'm just saying, it's not a problem. It's not an epidemic of faithless electors that people seem to think there's always going to be. It's not a thing. And even if it was a thing, there would have to be a large number to make a difference in the election. And so it's never happened before, and it's very unlikely to happen. So then how do you explain those five times when the president was elected by electoral votes but not popular votes? How do I explain those? That's the electoral college working. Lay it out for me. Well, what, what do you mean? I mean, that's... If the electoral college is following the popular vote, right, that should depend on how they're going to vote is who the majority leader in their state is... 
then why wouldn't the Electoral College votes match up with the popular vote? It's not because of faithless electors. It's just the way the system works. Keep going. Okay, I'm going to use California as an example. California, as we all know from every election ever, is a blue state. They always go blue. Their, uh, their electors always vote for the Democrat, right? Mm -hmm. You should know. You would love California. <laughs> Maybe I would. Are there Republicans in California? Yes, there are Republicans in California. Do they ever get any electors to vote for the Republican president? No. But still, their electors go to the blue guy. So is their vote being unheard? Is it the popular vote? It's still the system working. If the majority vote leads where the electors are putting their vote, then why would be there be incongruent results? It's not because of faithless electors. Okay, well, It's just the way the system works. That's a terrible explanation. It's just the way yeah. things are. That's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Explain yourself. I don't have to. No. <laughs> It's just the way the system is laid out. There are states with X amount of electors, and when they win enough votes, they go towards certain candidates. I mean, I, 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 I it's just the way the system works. What do you want from me? Okay. I don't. Doesn't mean it's broken. No, but I do remember one of your points being, uh, it's the way things have always been. What a solid argument. Well, let's keep things the way they've always been. <laughs> Just go with the status quo because. Well, I don't normally like that argument, but there are a few cases where I do. And this is one of those cases and not because I, you know, the Electoral College specifically, mm -hmm. but because of the founding fathers. And yes, they were right more often than not. If it wasn't for them, we would not have this beautiful country. It would not be as great as it is. We would look like everywhere else in the world. Everywhere else is terrible. So, yes, I, I believe in the Founding Fathers' vision. <laughs> and it works. Why would we change it? Okay, so what is your opinion when the founders stated that this was a product of haste and fatigue... That they were under a time limit and they just went with the best option that came to them at the time. The Electoral College was a solution to a problem that came up. It wasn't like thoroughly thought out with all kinds of like consideration. It was just an idea that we've stuck with for hundreds of years. That doesn't I, make it a mm -hmm. perfect idea. Well, there's no perfect system, right? But I find it very hard to believe that they didn't like the system when they implemented it because it's an amendment to the Constitution. Now, do you know how difficult it is to amend the Constitution? I do, because they tried to amend it further, and they couldn't, to change this. It's difficult to amend the Constitution, is my point. So, the fact that they were able to in the first place means they really believed in it at one point. And you know... That's good enough for me. At one point, they wanted okay. to continue to amend it. Well, obviously, it wasn't a popular opinion because they weren't able to. I'm just saying, this was developed quickly in a stressful situation, and it wasn't something that I'm sure they expected to stay in place for the rest of the country's history. And I think... Being flexible and open-minded towards change and improvement is always a good thing. This seems to be leading us towards a different conversation. Like, is the Constitution a living document? Or <laughs> is it an impeccable blueprint the founders laid out for us? Well, again, that's a different conversation. But I, uh, in general, my stance is that I tend to rely on the Founding Fathers as they were the geniuses who laid out this plan for us. Oh, so I see we differ on that as well. <laughs> Apparently so. That's one more to the list. Great. 
any of my other points you'd like to try to refute? What about the fact that minor- minorities only have a voice because of the electors? What was your point well, there? That's not exactly what I said. What I said was they have more of a voice and influence in the electoral college system. If it was just a straight uh, popular vote, mm-hmm. there are more white people in this country than minorities. That's just the yes. truth. And so white people would have literally more votes than them. Does that seem fair? Of course not. But what does the Electoral College have to do with that? Giving them more of a voice in what way? In each of their states. If it's two ratio of the population, then what benefit does having the Electoral College give minorities when the amount of electors is still in ratio to the population, how does that magnify any of their voices? I'm going to use another example. Okay? Excellent. I'm a big example guy, so let me throw another one at you. Let's hear it. The uh, 2020 presidential election, not that long ago, I'm sure most of us still recall. If we haven't blocked it out. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, it was pretty bad. But thinking back, Florida was won by Donald Trump. And at the time, people were saying that it was the, quote, Hispanic vote that won him the state. Do you think, I know that Trump didn't win the election, but do you think that the, quote, Hispanic vote would have caused that much of an impact in a different system? Shouldn't it have? Wouldn't the same amount of Hispanic people be voting in Florida with or without an electoral college? No, because it's their votes would be spread out across the country instead of um, in a voting block in that one state to win him, you know, X amount of electoral votes. I don't remember how many Florida has, but... Why would it be spread out across the state if it was people living in Florida that had that impactful vote? No, right? I mean... What, Hispanic... What, vote one trump in florida. florida right yes it put him over the top to win florida correct it would not that specific group would not have had such a large impact in a popular vote system they were able to under the electoral college Does that what make changed sense? the electoral votes that's what changed does Florida have more electors than other states? Yes. Isn't it in it's ratio one of the to the ones. population? Yes, but it's one of the larger ones. So if they have one of the larger populations, by the same rationing, if they have larger number of electors because they have a larger population, then wouldn't the Hispanic vote, vote be just as impactful without the electors having any involvement? Well, I suppose that's the argument then. <laughs> I'm saying they wouldn't. You're saying they would. This is why uh, there hasn't been any consensus on this issue, I suppose. <laughs> I guess that's why. I, I guess that's why. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of the Great Compromise Podcast. If you liked us, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Twitter. We're the Great Compromise Podcast everywhere. Share with your friends, and we'll see you next time.